Emily, if you could. Oh, there we go. Okay. Welcome to the Bloomington Rotary Club's weekly celebration of service for May 25th, 2021. I'm your current president, Ashley Wesley. Thank you for being here. Natalie, please show the flag for 15 seconds of respectful silence. We ask that you remain on mute and take this time to personally reflect. And now I'd like to introduce Bill Brown, who will be offering our reflection today. You're muted. Are you seeing a slide? Yes. yes. And you can hear me? All right. Um, about a year ago, uh, before my birthday, I came across this meme, which is um, your life in weeks, represented by one box for each week. So each row is a year, each box is a week. And um, I printed out a big poster like this because obviously I have a plotter as an architect. And this has been on my wall for a year. So I've been contemplating my life in weeks. And this is actually my life plotted out. So all the black boxes are all the weeks that I've been alive. And the empty boxes are the weeks that uh, if I live to be the average lifespan, I'll have all those empty boxes to fill uh, if I stay out of trouble. And um, some people look at this and they say, wow, it's, uh, that's kind of shocking that my life is finite. And um, I looked at this and I thought, wow, look at all the time I've got left to pull off something amazing. And um, yes, I should keep planting pecan trees. Um, and yes, Frank Lloyd Wright did most of his important work when he was 20 years older than I am. So uh, I, I'm very hopeful and, and optimistic about this chart. But looking at this chart for a year as a designer, I'm thinking, wow, this is really boring. Um, each box represents seven days, 168 hours, over 10,000 minutes. Each black box holds uh, countless memories. And uh, each empty box represents uh, unlimited potential. So uh, my uh, designer mind kept looking at this and thinking, well, what could this be? So what I'm thinking about is that perhaps these are not blocks that are descending, but they're ascending and that they ascend in a spiral where you have um, 52 uh, seven-sided rooms around a spiral. So each year you make another lap around the sun. And I thought about uh, it would be interesting to virtually visit each of these weeks in the past and perhaps have a, a, a feed from the internet and all the data that's available out there to have the music of that week, the news of that week, the history of that week um, automatically fed into each of these rooms, these virtual rooms that you could actually place yourself in virtually and look at that week and, and immerse yourself in that history. And then you could add your own journal entries, your own autobiographical information, major events, what you were thinking that week, if you could remember from that week. Um, and you could literally take people with you into those virtual rooms. Like my grandkids, I could say, this is the week that, that you were born. And this is what I remember from that week. And this is what was happening during that week in, in your early life. But I'm also intrigued by the idea that you could have boxes that are ascending into the future and that you could start to fill in some of those with goals and aspirations. But this is my reflection for this week, my birthday, my 67th birthday and my 67th trip around the sun. And I think I have plenty of time to figure out how to make this concept uh, into a reality. So stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is so cool. 
I'd, I'd love to keep hearing about how it progresses. So keep us posted. Will do. All right. Um, I don't believe there are any guests joining us today, but now's your chance. If you've invited someone and they're here, please speak up and introduce them. I don't see anyone. Okay. So thanks to our producers, Natalie Blaze, Michael Shermis, Sally Gaskell, and Aaron Davis. And our roundabout reporter for this week is Bob Salzberg. Birthdays, as Bill already mentioned, today is Bill's birthday, May 25th. And Marcus Debro is May 30th. Happy birthday. And membership anniversaries, Judy Lucas, 24 years, and past president, Joy Harder, 15 years. So thank you so much for being a part of the Rotary family. Now we have a few minutes for happy dollars before we jump into the rest of our program. If anyone has anything to share. Charlotte? Oh, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. 12 happy dollars for each for a month of Ashley being president. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Joy? Yes. And I will donate $15 for 15 years of Rotary experience. Wow. Yay. <laughs> Yay. 15 happy boxes. Anniversary. 15 times times 52 boxes. <laughs> uh, Amy. Okay, I have 17 happy dollars for uh, the great work that Wonder Lab's been doing in celebrating the brood 10 cicadas, including um, cicada bingo, which you can find on the site, <laughs> including boxes like hit in the face by a cicada, my dog <laughs> a cicada, I ate a cicada, that's not gonna happen. And, um, and tonight, I want to tell everybody that at five o'clock, if you want to get all your questions answered about cicadas, there's an Ask Me Anything that you can attend with Armin Mochek and Roger Hangarder, and you can submit your questions ahead of time if you want. Well, at, at Wonder Lab? Yeah, it's online. Good. I'll put the link in the chat. Uh, Liz Feidel. I have $17 for set my 17 years in Rotary that I'll be finishing and, and exiting the club. Thank you. Whoa. Thank you, Liz. So I have, um, I have 42 happy dollars. They're sort of unhappy dollars. It's to represent each year that I worked with Scott Schurz, mm -hmm. who died last night at the age oh. of Oh. I'm sorry to hear that. I am sorry to hear that as well. A good friend. It's news. Was he in Florida? Right. Was he in Florida? He was in Florida, yes. Oh, thank you for telling us. And is Kay alive? She is? Yes, she is. Mm -hmm. Good. Is there any way we could reach them that you could tell us? Uh, I, I don't really know right now, Raj. Maybe in the paper. I'll, oh. I'll put it in the, I'll, I'll share it with you when I find out. Okay, thank you. That's, thank you. that's it. Rod, didn't you raise your hand for happy dollars? Steve? Uh, I think Raj had raised his hand earlier for happy dollars, but nobody called on him. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of people and I can't see everybody on the screen at once. Uh, Raj, go ahead. Well, kind of. Uh, put an ice cold on my thoughts after hearing about the death of my friend Scott. But in any case, life has to move forward. I will put $12 for the 12 months Ashley was a president, as well as I will put $20 in welcoming our new member, Marcus Deborah. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Alan? So I'm going to go with the 17 theme here. Um, my daughter, who is 17 years old, Gabrielle, uh, just finished high school 
and Whoa. um she is an absolutely amazing human being um and there's some pictures on facebook if you want to go and have a look at them <laughs> but i'm just absolutely thrilled and um really inspired by what she's doing with her life what's she going to do she's going to be studying at Bryn Mawr next year oh, wow. um, doing art, art history and anthropology excellent So I have five happy dollars, and Sandy should come next. Uh, I have five happy dollars uh, for the five hugs that I gave my 34-year-old daughter when I saw her in South Carolina, the, I guess the week before last, for the first time in a year and a half. <laughs> Thanks. Hey. Sandy. Um, and I'm putting in five happy dollars uh, to stay with the cicada theme because my sister's closet has an escape to my sister's closet cicada sale right now where um, we can tell you for a fact that no cicadas were harmed in the production of our ad that you will find on Facebook. <laughs> and I'm putting that in the chat so you can see the That's because the squirrels ate them all. <laughs> Thank you. Any other takers? Well, that was fun. Okay, oh, Jim Sims. Hello, how are you? I had to unmute myself. Um, I, I feel festive today. Um, <laughs> just a little different than my, I normally am, but uh, we're coming back. Um, but I'd like to um, very solemnly donate $100 and I would like for it to go to the diversity fund um, in celebration or an acknowledgement of our new member, Mr. Marcus Debro. Um, I think I think that fund and the program is going to reap uh, dividends moving forward. Um, uh, not only with um, some diversity and equity, but with just good people, which Marcus Debro is a very good person. So thank you all very much. And um, Natalie, please bill me. <laughs> thank you. Well, all right. Well, Thank you so well, much, everyone. Marcus, Mark, may I just add some? Marcus Debro is the son of Lola Debro, who was a fantastic woman. And I'm really glad that he's joined the club. Thank you. Okay, um, quickly, uh, so that we have enough time for the rest of our program. Thank you, yes. everyone, for sharing your happy dollars uh, today with us. And I would like to share our slate of officers for the upcoming year with the note that we will have an official vote sent next Tuesday so that you have the week to review the slate to approve the slate next Tuesday. You will get an email to vote on the following. Officers are President Sally Gaskell, President-elect Alon Barker, immediate past president, myself, secretary and membership chair, Dave Meyer, treasurer, Kyla Cox Deckard. And board members, new Bryce Bow and Marilyn Wood will be nominated for another two-year term. Ron Barnes will be returning for year two of his two-year term, and Jim Sims will be returning for year two of his two-year term. So look out next week for that vote through your email, and congratulations to the new officers and your impending approval. <laughs> All right, um, now on to the most exciting part of today. Dave Meyer, will you induct our newest member? Thank you, President Ashley. Uh, I am happy to lead one of the most enjoyable Rotary events, induction of a new member. Uh, Marcus Debro has lived his entire life in Bloomington. He was born at Bloomington Hospital and graduated from Bloomington High School North after attending both Fairview Elementary and Dyer Junior High School. From Bloomington, Marcus went away to college for a time and graduated from Keene College in Keene, New Hampshire. He went on to marry and he and his wife are proud owners of a dog. Marcus believes and demonstrates service above self. He is active in the community and travels Indiana often as a basketball referee. Marcus has refereed three boys and three girls basketball state finals. 
Marcus belongs to a number of clubs, I mean, sorry, groups dedicated to improving our community. Kiwanis, 25 plus Kiwanis who care, 50 men who care, the IU Community Committee, IU Foundation, and is a member of the board of our own Teachers Warehouse. Marcus currently serves as the assistant principal at Bloomington North. Okay, Marcus. On behalf of the board and membership of the Bloomington Rotary Club, it is a great pleasure to welcome you as our newest member of our club. We look forward to the fellowship that you will share as well as your participation in many club projects that make our community, country and world a better place. Though Rotary is not a political organization, Rotarians are vitally concerned with good citizenship and the election of strong leaders to public office. While Rotary is not a religious organization, it is built on those eternal principles that have served as a moral compass for people throughout the ages. Rotary is an organization of business and professional people pledged to uphold the highest ethical and moral standards. Rotarians believe in the worldwide, fellow, uh, worldwide fellowship and peace can be achieved when people unite with the Rotary motto of service above self. Rotary activities exemplify the charity and sacrifice that one would expect from people who believe that they have a responsibility to help others. Rotary Act, uh, 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 Marcus, you have been chosen for membership in the Bloomington Rotary Club because our fellow members believe you to be a leader in our community and because you possess the qualities to champion the message and principles of Rotary. You are a representative of your vocation within the club and community. You now become an ambassador of Bloomington Rotary carrying the ideals of service to all within your sphere of influence. Our community will know and judge Rotary by your character and service. We will also look to you for inspiration as we strive to become better Rotarians. I now ask that you pen yourself with the distinguished badge of a Rotarian, the Rotary Pen, your Rotary Pen. We'll get it in there. Very good. Mm. We ask that you wear your rotary print pen with pride, not only to all rotary functions, but to your many endeavors as a symbol of your commitment to rotary ideals mm. and, your, uh, and our recognition of your contribution toward a better world. Rotarians, please sit up straight and welcome our newest <laughs> Rotarian, Marcus Debro. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be a part of a great organization and uh, let's get to work. Always. <laughs> Welcome, Marcus. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, let's jump right into our program. We are going to discuss committees today, which new members and old members alike share in the responsibility of making our rotary ideals uh, come to fruition in the community. First thing that I'd like to announce is that we are exploring hybrid meetings, which will include involvement from Rotarians over Zoom and in person. What we're waiting on before we make those final decisions are guidelines from Indiana University. So we don't have a concrete start date for our meeting in person again, but a plan is in the works. And we're discussing this as a board to make sure that we know what meetings will look like and what um, we'll be facing in the coming months. But we're thrilled to be planning to get together once again very soon. And we will keep you notified every step of the way. With that, we will be having our first in-person event of 2021 this summer with a social to celebrate the start of the new Rotary year. It will be Thursday, July 8th from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Switchyard Pavilion. 
and it will be an official changeover ceremony to celebrate Sally's new year as president and the change of the guard. And so we hope that you'll join us. It'll be a wonderful event that we can get together and see each other once again. And um, you'll be uh, getting further details very soon in a formal invite, but we exciting. hope to see that. And without further ado, Sally Gaskell will be introducing the rest of our program today, discussing committees. Sally. Thank you, President Ashley. And I just like to remind everyone that Ashley has one full month left as president. <laughs> So it's so great to see all of you here on Zoom today. Thanks for being here. Um, yes, our topic is committees. And as Marcus Debro has said, let's get to work. So what do committees do? Um, committees honestly do the work of our club. Uh, your board of directors oversees the budget and operations that support our activities and service projects. But the heart, hands, and soul of our club is the committee work. So our goal is for every member to serve actively on at least one committee. Rotary is also a terrific place to practice and build your leadership skills. And you'll be learning about some available chairmanships of, of various committees that um, are with us uh, over the next few minutes. Um, at the end of our meeting, Natalie will send out a sign-up form via email for you to select your committee assignments for the coming year. So please take a moment and think about it. And if you have any questions, contact me, contact Ashley, or honestly, anyone on the board. Uh, we're all listed on the website, and we're all happy to hear from you about the work of our various committees. So we're going to start by highlighting a few committees. Um, and so Dave Meyer, back to you for some membership. Hi, I'm uh, I'm proud to uh, to be the chairperson of the of the membership committee. Uh, membership is dedicated to the recruitment of new members and the retention of existing members. And we meet uh, quarterly right now. Our next meeting will be uh, in the uh, latter June. Uh, I just want to say, give you guys one little thing to point out is that you're all adjunct members of the membership committee. And so as, as members of Rotary, of the Bloomington Rotary Club, you're the heart of club membership. Your outreach to those who know you is, uh, that you know is critical to, uh, is a critical part to growing our club. Uh, please do bring a guest to a meeting, uh, look at the upcoming program and ask yourself, is this something that uh, your friend or colleague or associate might find interesting? When you bring someone to, to the club for a meeting, please don't keep it a secret because we want to be able to acknowledge them. Thank you. Awesome. Michael Shermas, who is the co-chair of the program committee is going to talk programs. Michael. Thank you, President-elect Sally. <laughs> Um, yes, uh, and I get to uh, welcome my co-chair, Connie Chapalis. I'm very glad that she's going to be joining me in this effort uh, uh, very soon. Uh, so uh, uh, let me talk about the program committee uh, for a moment. Um, it is uh, obviously uh, incumbent upon the program committee to uh, do the programs. And so we think about uh, uh, who should uh, uh, speak to us. And the way it works is, uh, well, first I should say, um, and I hope that you all notice that there are a variety of topics. We have some that are from uh, people at IU. We have some people from the business world. We have nonprofits. We have entertainers. We have all sorts of different people. And so it is the programs committee's responsibility to try to ensure that there's that variety. Um, how that happens is uh, that there are uh, people who are joining the program committee get to select those speakers. And so they uh, find people in those different areas and uh, uh, ask them to come speak to us. Uh, so uh, we meet just once a year where we uh, just talk about some general stuff and, and get organized. And then uh, you get to select uh, up to four dates or so, depending on how many people are on the committee. Um, we keep a potential list of other speakers who would like to speak to us. But generally program committee members want to select their own and that's of course fine. Um, and they select them in areas that they know, people that they know. 
Uh, and that's what, in essence, the program committee is about. Happy to have people join us. I think that we're going to be a, a down in our numbers, and so we don't want to have to uh, select too many. So uh, I hope to I hope, uh, I hope some people will come aboard. So that's a general what we're about. Thank you. And by the way, I think we'll have time uh, at the end uh, for Q and A, so people can uh, ask questions of the various committee chairs. Then, um, Alain Barker has graciously accepted my invitation to be uh, chair of the communications committee this year, along with his work as the president elect. Um, and Alain is going to be talking about communications as well as a brand new committee, thanks to COVID nineteen and the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sally. And hi, everybody. Um, and before I, I start talking about what's ahead for us in the communications area, I think just want to give out a huge thank you to all of you um, who've been involved in communicating about the Rotary Club, both within the organization as well as to the public. It's such an important part of how we establish ourselves in the community, how we serve and how we communicate about how we serve. And so following on from Dave Meyer's um, suggestion, I just wanted to suggest before I go into the committee work itself that we're all adjunct members of the communications committee. We're telling our story um, proudly and happily to everybody that we can possibly think of. So um, that's the first thing I want to say is this next year, as always, um, thank you to those who get involved and thank you so much to all of you when you uh, repost messages and when you tell your friends and when you bring people into Rotary. Communications about our club is really um, the heartbeat is part of the heartbeat of what we do. So that said, um, I'm very much looking forward to this year um, as, a, as a way of looking once again, I think it's a good idea to sort of refresh our ideas of what communications might be. So much of communications is shifting and has been shifting over the past you know, five, 10 years into digital and virtual communications. And so what I would love to do with the committee as we form it is to have a bit of a mini retreat. Uh, retreats are always a bit laborious, but certainly I think it'd be great for us to get together and just have a quick chat about what we think about what we're doing as an organization, how we might be able to tweak and adapt to um, the way of the world. Um, and so if you're interested in, in learning more about that or getting involved or lending some of your expertise to the committee, please feel free to jump aboard and and help us. So. Um, Communications is layered, as as Sally was suggesting now with um, yeah, digital communications and what have you coming in, and now more recently, technology and the, the, the hybrid virtual way that we're um, leading our meetings. So we're going to be forming a subcommittee of the communications committee, which is going to be looking at uh, the technology that we use and how we run our virtual meetings. And we are looking for perhaps four or five individuals in our in our um, club who are um, who would like to play with some toys. Uh, and you're very welcome to to jump aboard and join Michael Shermas, myself, and a few others um, as we explore how we can do it. We actually have a few ideas already. We had a good conversation a few days ago about um, a an app that we plan to use that is going to be a lot of fun and actually is quite easy to use. So um, if you're interested in that sort of thing, please join the communications committee and let me know that you're interested. So just looking forward to a fun year of um, lots of communications about the, the club and celebrating the amazing work that we all do in our community. Thanks, Sally. Thanks, Alain. And a special shout out to Aaron Davis and Owen Johnson who have been holding down our social media communications and hope you're interested. And, and, and thank you to Jim Bright as well for everything and that he does, well. yeah. Mm. Who, of course, sends us our, our weekly email, which for some reason Rotary calls P-mail. I've never quite figured that out, but I'm sure that that's part of the knowledge base that I'll be learning. Okay, Judy Schroeder is head of the Roundabout Committee. We couldn't be more grateful to Judy when I announced to um, several other members that Judy would be re-upping for the coming year. We all went, Hooray! So Judy, over to you to talk about Roundabout. Well, we are part of the communication effort and we're very fortunate in having some very faithful members who I 
I'm pleading with to uh, re-up. Unlike the Herald Times where we've seen an exodus of reporters, we even welcome two new ones this year. And we need two more new ones to complete our assignment of one a month. As it is now, we're one a month plus a couple extra. Um, we report what's going to happen. We report what has happened. We report what is uh, what community events the club is uh, involving itself with, and every single week we're there for you. We offer you a way to uh, let people know with an easy email what the next program is going to be. We offer a way for you to email people what the program was all about. And I myself have found that when I have been unable to be at a meeting, I read the newsletter and I feel I, I know what, what has happened and I, I feel that I'm keeping up. So uh, we're just going to keep on doing what we've been doing and we welcome um, new members to join us and count on old members to stay with us. Thank you. Judy, thanks so much. Okay, so we just heard about five or so of the committees out of the 15 that are available for um, any member to join. Um, the ones that we've heard about just to review are membership, program, communications, and the sub areas of communications, technology, and roundabout. So now I'm going to briefly review the remaining 10 and Ashley, if you have any words of wisdom to say as I'm going through this, please speak up. Okay, um, I'll try not to be boring. These are in alphabetical order. And um, I am using um, a document that I've updated a little bit, but that I believe Aaron Davis put together a couple of years ago that's absolutely terrific. And it will be part of the email that um, Natalie sends out at one o'clock. And it's got all of these descriptions in even greater detail if you have any questions about the purpose and function of each committee. Okay, so in alphabetical order, we start with the classification committee, which I love. It's the keeper of a core rotary tr tradition. Um, back in the early days, there was uh, one, one categorization for each Rotarian, one accountant, one lawyer, et cetera. We're a little bit more flexible and fluid these days, but we still have Ron Barnes and Dick McCaig as the co-chairs of our classification committee, providing professional classifications for all members and other activities. Thanks, Ron and Dick. Now, community service. This is, this is I gotta tell you, one of the ones that's keeping me up at night because we need a leader for our community service committee. Um, it's so important. Uh, such an important part of our whole service above self mandate. Um, if you're interested in what our club does in the community, then this committee is for you. Um, we, uh, we do have leadership for one important function of the committee, our district grant application every year. And I wanna thank Von Welch for agreeing to serve as the chair of this important process again. This is the process by which um, this year, the members of the Community Service Committee selected the Lotus Foundation's World Bazaar as our community service project that we then via Vaughn and Ashley submitted to the district to receive $3,000. Our club will be matching that with another 3,000. So $6,000 to the Lotus Foundation. There will be opportunities for volunteers um, galore uh, when the activity takes place, which I believe is April 1st and 2nd, 2022. So stay tuned for that. But there are lots of other community projects that are our potentials. There are some that we do every year, such as the bell ringing and the telethons for WTIU and FIU and others. If you have any interest in um, um, stepping up to the plate and serving as the overall chair of this committee, I would be ever so grateful to hear from you. Thanks. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go uh, for our next one in alphabetical order, diversity, equity, and inclusion. I'm gonna actually go over to Ashley now for an intro to this new committee. Thank you. So we have a new committee, the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee, which will be chaired 
by Yolanda Trevino. It is in the early stages of development, and so we're developing a charge now before we have a fully formed committee. Um, but Yolanda wanted me to pass along a message to invite members who are committed to inclusion across all groups within our community, such as diverse backgrounds, vocations, and life experiences to join this committee. You can start with your interest by reaching out to Yolanda directly at ytrevino at gmail.com. And you can also sign up on the spreadsheet as well that'll be going out later today. Um, but we're in the early stages of developing this committee. It's very exciting. And we hope that you'll consider joining if you have experience to share and come from those backgrounds. That's all. Thanks, Ashley. I'm really excited about this new committee um, and look forward to it having a big impact on the work of our club. And huge, huge thanks to past president Yolanda Trevino for chairing it. Okay. We're still in alphabetical order here and I'm only up to the Fs, but it's fellowship, family and fun. So here's the question, do you like to have fun? Do you like to create fun for others? Then this committee is for you. It actually has a range of, fun of functions, including um, the um, uh, planning of social events, the sign up for greeters, the introduction of guests, uh, uh, and also support things like support for ill or injured members. You may not know that Martha Wales has quietly fulfilled that function for quite some time. Um, looking for a chair or co-chairs or many chairs for fellowship, family, and fun. Next is international service. Uh, this is one that's near and dear to my heart. It's one thing that I really love about Rotary that we're so connected on a global basis to service. Um, Past President Lauren Snyder is re-upping to be chair of this committee. And mm. again, you know, so many of these committees have not able to have, have had uh, uh, much of a function over the last year because of the pandemic. We're going to be beyond that in 21-22. And I'm really excited to see what this committee and its leadership come up with in terms of selecting and managing an international service project. Um, many exciting opportunities to consider. Next is peace building. This was a committee founded, I believe, by past President Aaron Davis. Its purpose is to promote positive peace, both locally and globally. Another kind of a, a function that's really unique to Rotary. Need a co-chair to work with Aaron and to um, uh, bring in new members to the committee as well. So please consider that one. Rotary International Foundation. This is an open position uh, as chair. So the chair and the members of this committee really work to raise funds from our club to send to Rotary International Foundation. Now, this is not to be confused with our own Bloomington Rotary Foundation, which as we know, we've got. It has its own board that we've already elected this year. That is not a committee, the Bloomington Rotary Foundation. It's its own board. Um, and organization. But this one is specifically focused on RI um, and its charitable foundation. So um, one of the things that the uh, committee helps do is to identify people who are close to becoming Paul Harris fellows and then making that happen. So let me know if you're interested in that. I'd love to talk to you. Scholarship. Guys, we're on the S's. I'm happy to say that Matt Stitzinger has agreed to chair our scholarships committee again this year. We just heard from them at the beginning of May. What a terrific group. Um, so please sign up for that if you are interested. Finally, next to last is vocational service, something that's near and dear to President Ashley's heart. Um, Along with classification, Rotary has this special history of gathering professionals to share their skills with the club and the community, as well as mentoring and sharing career paths with students and young professionals. This committee has kind of taken a back burner for the last few years. So to make it active, we need a chair and we'll need some committee members. So if mentorship and vocational service are your thing, this may be for you. And finally, we're on the wise. Youth services, again, one of the most important and critical aspects of the service above self that we do. 
Um, the purpose of youth services is to support and encourage projects that are directed at engaging young people in our community. One of the most important functions is RILA. We love our acronyms in Rotary. I'll try not to, to take advantage of them, but RILA is Rotary Youth Leadership Awards. And I'm really grateful to the longtime leadership of past presidents, Joy Harder and Lauren Snyder, who are returning as co-chairs for RILA. There will be a Bradford Woods retreat for our young people this year. Oh. Well, I'm assuming there will be. And Lauren and Joy say yes. So there are definitely slots available in youth services if you like to work with young people. So that is it, my friends. We have covered all 15 committees and we have a little bit of time left. Um, Ashley for Q&A, if you'd like to take that on. Any questions about committees and what it entails or comments? I have a question. International service. I know that we've had a, we've had a uh, connection with Myanmar and a water project in Myanmar. I wonder what the status of that is. Um, I can speak to that, yeah. um, Charlotte. Um, J.T. Waring, whom, as you know, is a <clears throat> Bloomington native and is a member of the Los Angeles uh, Rotary Club, brought us that opportunity, and they've done a lot of good work there. I think they've uh, <clears throat> installed um, more than 70 um, clean water systems in Myanmar, um, just as um, uh, Sally had mentioned with, the, uh, with covid setting back uh, various projects, it uh, threw a wrench into theirs. In fact, uh, JT had a young man, you may remember, he brought with him here a couple of years ago, and he is stuck in the United States and can't get home uh, to Myanmar right now uh, because of uh, the COVID situation. Yeah, uh, but there's more than the COVID situation, it's a whole- There, there is indeed, there is indeed. But <clears throat> I understand that the uh, area um, where the uh, uh, clean water systems have been put in uh, by the Rotary Group uh, is not, uh, fortunately, is not in the uh, area of uh, uh, violence, yeah. military violence. Thank you for asking. Yeah, so I guess I, my question, broader question was, would we be seeking a new, new project for this year? There are as Sally mentioned, just a myriad of opportunities. And um, I think uh, one of the questions for Lauren and the committee is, do we embrace something that Rotary is already doing and support it? Yeah. Or do we go off in a uh, new and different uh, direction there? Um, I've got my thoughts on that, but uh, you know, yeah. I, um, you know, uh, well, don't I, 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 chaired, I chaired that committee at one point when I carried the water in on my head, if mm -hmm. you remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there, there are seven areas of focus uh, in, in Rotary and many, many opportunities all over the world uh, to get involved. And uh, um, I'm going to have, uh, we're going to have a speaker on June 8th, the young lady who's a uh, Rotary Peace Fellow. And I think she may be able to shed some light on some of the wonderful, wonderful things okay. that Rotary is doing uh, at various places in the world here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Judy Schroeder. Yes, I go back in Rotary quite a long time. And it used to be that members, so that everyone did work on committees, since that was the work oh. of Rotary, if you didn't sign up, you were assigned. Is mm. that still the case? I think that's a terrific idea, Judy. And um, yes, so I would advise everyone to choose before you are chosen for. Before you volunteered? <laughs> oh, that's good, yep. No, I can't, I couldn't agree more. I think that, um, I mean, committees, there's such a, such a drudgery of a word and I'm so thrilled that so many Rotarians showed up today to talk about committees and to learn about them because I've always felt that committees are the most important um, functions of any nonprofit organization that I've been involved with that, that I would like to have, to think was a high functioning organization. It's absolutely yeah. the, the, the case for a service organization like us. And community service, I think is really, really important. Yes. 
Sally, could I say something? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, I just, I've served on a couple of committees. And one of the things about Rotary committees that I've noticed is that they don't meet just to meet because they're committees. They meet to accomplish things and they're very efficient. And, and I, I say that because those of us who come out of academia have had the experiences of going to committee meetings and committee meetings and committee meetings. And that is not what Rotary committee meetings are like. So I would just emphasize that to people. They are, they are meetings to accomplish something, get it done and move on. And that's, that's good stuff. Yeah, I appreciate that, Kate. I think that may be where committees have a bad name academic committees, but but not so in Rotary. And uh, to add on to that point, some committees only meet for a few months out of the year, and then they reconvene when their time comes again. So the scholarship committee is a good example of that. Um, a lot of work in a very concentrated area, and then you have a few months where you're not doing as much to meet, and then you meet again when, when the time comes. So good point. That is very true. And it doesn't just happen in academia. <laughs> but it certainly um, does not happen here. And it's up to the discretion of the chair um, and the rest of the committee when those committees meet. So if you join, you'll have uh, input into how those, those meetings are run. And just to throw in, now that we're able to meet on Zoom, there's efficiency in committee meetings. Yes. It's true. Yeah. As long as somebody's there to set up the Zoom. <laughs> All right, any other questions? I don't see any other raised hands. I uh, would just encourage uh, our newest members as, as time allows uh, to uh, raise your hand, get involved in the uh, committees. And uh, as uh, Sally said, that's where the rotary rubber really meets the road there. And, and it's uh, so easy to really get excited about rotary when you get involved in a committee whose cause you uh, uh, love. I see Bryce Bo has joined us. Welcome, Bryce. Good to see your face. Yes, hello. It's good to be with you all. Good to see your faces as well. So glad to have you joining the board next year. Yes, uh, thrilled to serve. I miss seeing you all very much. And sorry for my uh, absenteeism. I've uh, communicated with Lauren a bit about this, but it, I. And right now I'm teaching two summer classes actually. So this is my mini break. Uh, my next class starts at 1.30. So, um, and the other one just finished. So it's just been a uh, hectic few semesters with work, but anyhow, uh, grateful to be back and grateful to serve. What do you teach? Uh, I'm teaching uh, organizational strategy. Hmm. That sounds relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks, and it's so good to see you. Anyone else have any comments or questions about committees before we close our meeting today? Ashley, you've been a very good president. You're always cheerful and keep things going, and I really thank you. Thanks, Charlotte, that means the world to me. Ashley, before we go, could you go over the next steps, exactly how we're all gonna be registering for these committees and what have you? Yes, so at one o'clock today, you'll be receiving an email from Natalie that will have a sign up genius for you to select your committee. You'll put, you'll be able to see each of the 15 committees highlighted there and you can click sign up and then you'll be directed to the next page to then input your information and you can put any comments or notes there that you want us to know. And that way we can keep track. I would recommend if you think that you're already on a committee and you're a, you know, died in the wool, on this committee for years and years, don't avoid signing up. Please sign up again so that we can keep track of that and make sure we have an official record. Um, you know, we know that Judy's gonna lead up the roundabout committee, but we'd love for her to sign up again, um, just so we have everyone documented so that we have a, a really clear idea of where we're going next year. Um, and you should have everything there, including the description in greater detail of each committee and what that would entail in a document that's attached to that email as well. Wonderful. If you do not receive that email at one o'clock um, and, and you're wondering where it is, please reach out to me or Sally or Natalie, and we will make sure that you get that document uh, or those documents so that you can sign up. Thank you. All right. Any other final comments or questions? Last call. 
Okay. So um, Jim Bright, will you tell us about next week's program? Thank you, President Ashley. Uh, again, I just want to uh, welcome Marcus uh, Debro, first of all. It's uh, so good to have you aboard, Marcus. And uh, be with us next week, same time, same Zoom channel, uh, when our keynoter will be Kirk White. Uh, Kirk is the IU Assistant Vice President of Governmental Relations and Economic Engagement. And since uh, April of 2020, Kirk has been co-chair of the IU Bloomington COVID Response Unit. So he's been a busy man. He's also a retired Colonel in the Indiana National Guard uh, with service to Afghanistan and Jordan. Uh, he's a former city council member, past president of Bloomington North Rotary. Uh, the title of this talk is gonna be Leadership Lessons Learned During a Global Pandemic. So don't miss it. Thank you so much. And Natalie, will you please show the four-way test so that we can recite that together? Of the things we think, we think say, say or do. First, first, first is it the truth. Is the truth. Second, Second, is it the truth. Second, Second is it the truth. Third, 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 Third will it build, build, build goodwill and friendships? Fourth, fourth, will it be official to all concerned? Thank you again for being with us today. And I do want to say a final farewell to Liz Feidel. And uh, this is her last meeting with us. And we hope that you enjoy your retirement and that you'll come back to visit just as often as you can. Yeah. Thank you. And if there aren't any further comments or questions, I guess we'll just see you next week and okay. look in your inbox for that committee sign up and please claim your spot. Okay. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Lost my mouse. Bye. Bye. We didn't have any guests, did we? Okay, just wanted to make sure I got that final count there. See you next week. <laughs>